I'm now politicking my homie Bricks Fitness. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm great, man. So I was just telling them, like, we go, I interview, interviewed you back in 2011 as a rapper. I remember that song. I still like it. That, uh, if you owe a nigga money, nigga pay a nigga bag. <laughs> Word, I like yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, 2011. Damn, that's, that's been a minute, man. Time is flying. So how would you describe yourself now? Because I, I went to your Twitter, so I was reading, like, a fitness coach, personal trainer. Yeah. Uh, as far as a title, I, I, yeah. mean, I am a certified personal trainer. Um but, but more than anything, man, I'm just a I'm just a vessel that God is using to to give people hope, man. That's what's uh, up. I don't. I mean, I never. I don't. I don't really title myself, but uh, I'm just here. To, I'm just here to do my part, bro, make, and leave this place a little better than I found it. That's that's really it. All right. So just kind of, I guess, just kind of take us from that journey, man. Because like I said, I remember you in 2011, and I see the before and after pictures, man. So I see that all the transformation and the journey. So. What kind of motivated you to, to take that fitness journey? Um, it was a few factors. Um, for one, I have two children. You know, my son is nine years old. My daughter is 11. And um, my son is an athlete. I wanted to, you know, I had a vision of being able to train with him when he's in high school. So I was just kind of thinking ahead in that aspect. I had a friend pass away from um, health in, health induced, I mean, weight induced health issues. Um, so that was a big wake up call for me. Uh, I personally was diagnosed with high blood pressure. You know, they try, they try to put me on medication for that. Um, I was borderline diabetic. I actually had like a real diabetic scare where um, the doctor told me I was diabetic, but it was because I didn't fast the morning that they, that they took my sample. So basically, if the doctor told me I was going to die. I wanted to be around for my kids, and I actually had a friend who passed away. So those are the three things that kind of went into the gumbo that led me and it was other things too, you know, me getting in trouble and essentially losing everything that I worked, you know, worked up until that point for in my life. Um, so I was depressed. I recently got divorced. It was a lot of things, bro. It was a lot of things. Um, but more important, more, most importantly, it was just God. It was just divine for me to find fitness when I, when I did because it essentially saved my life on multiple levels. And then where did you start as far as on the fitness level? Like, how often did you start working out? Like, just give us some of them early workouts you was doing. Bro, I was I was a madman in the beginning, to be honest, man. And I don't even like to tell the story because I don't want people to think that this is the way to, to do it. But I was literally mm -hmm. working out seven days a week. I totally flipped my diet upside down. You know, I literally was, became obsessed with transforming my body. But as a result of the extreme measures that I took, I plateaued. I hit walls where I would binge and then gain back 50, 60 pounds. You know what I'm saying? I definitely didn't do it right. But I did it in a way that puts me in a position now to be able to help people not make the same mistakes that I did. So, But the, the early workouts, man, like I, I, like I said, I was really extreme. I did a lot of cardio. I did a lot of... Uh, weightlifting, I would spend two hours a day in the gym, like just doing all types of extreme stuff that, like I said, that I don't suggest people trying. And then what, so what is your like training philosophy now? All right, for people who need to lose a lot of weight, I definitely um, suggest people taking their time, you know, to try to have a modest approach, um, try to make slow changes that they can realistically stick to over a long period of time versus going gung-ho, going from zero to 100, and it only lasts, and you know what I'm saying, like, my, my policy is more so, like, um, like, consistency trumps intensity, you know what I'm saying, so, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather people go at a, a realistic pace in the beginning and kind of build on it versus, you know, like I said, going 100 miles an hour and only lasting for six weeks. And what's your take on supplements? Like, what kind of supplements do you take? And, you know, how far should people go into supplements? Supplements. See, the thing is, like, people don't approach supplements with the right mindset. Like, if you just look at the word supplement, it's it's supposed it's designed to supplement your diet. So, naturally, you want to get all the vitamins and minerals that you can from whole food sources, right? Um as far as building muscle and losing weight, you don't need supplements. I take a multivitamin and I take fish oil. 
that's the only thing I would, would advise people to that is kind of like essential supplements. But everything else is, is just a tool. Um, and just like with any other tool, if you're not using it properly, if you're not doing the work that you're supposed to be doing and making the changes in your nutrition, that the supplements are not going to do anything for you anyway. So um, do they help? Yes. But I think you should approach it with the right mindset as it's a supplement. It's supposed to help, not to do the work for you. And then um, what do you think about, because I don't know, I look at the gym like, with me at the gym, I kind of look at it as like a mind, body, and soul connection. So I feel like with the gym, with me, it kind of helps my mind, and it just like it all goes together. So I'm trying to like improve everything at the same time, like my mind, body, and soul. So do you kind of take that same approach? Absolutely. And um, one of the things I like to, because with me, in the beginning, it started off as a weight loss mission, right? A little weight loss journey. But it didn't really start sticking until it became something bigger than that. Mm-hmm. So. I like to tell people like uh, approach it as as more so like a personal development journey. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because that it it, it kind of changes things. It changes the scope. It changes the way you you know the patience you have with yourself. The way you approach it changes because it's like a lot of the lessons that mentors or my dad didn't teach me. You know because he wasn't around were taught to me through fitness, you know what I'm saying? Because the same principles apply across the board. The principles of fitness apply to the principles of life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You get out of it what you put in. It takes resiliency. It takes, you know what I'm saying, consistency. It takes, um, it like the same principles apply across the board. So it, it was kind of like my, it was my, uh, it was my escape from reality in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It was where I found, because before I, where I used to turn to food, I started turning to fitness, and it became my everything. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely agree. It's definitely more than just a physical thing. It's definitely a mental and a spiritual um, thing as well. And then how important is, like, uh, do you do anything like affirmations or visualization, like positive thinking? How important is that? Because like, even when you live, they say you're supposed to kind of like visualize the muscle growing and stuff Absolutely. like that. Um, that's that's a big, that's definitely a big deal. Okay, but that's definitely a big deal. Um, I actually just got off the phone with one of my clients, and um, I told him, you know, the number one, the, the the number one thing right now is for you to believe, right, that you can actually, because he had a lot of weight to lose, and if you don't believe that it's possible, if you can't visualize your body as you want it or you can't visualize the life the, your life as you want it then it's not going to happen like you kind of got to train your subconscious so definitely affirmations um i have i have signs up all over my house if like you can see back there those white you know what i'm saying those white pieces of paper <clears throat> those are all affirmations that i kind of I like I, I i i make it a i make it my business to program my subconscious to to align with whatever my goals are whether it be uh, physical, financial, you know what I'm saying, or, or a life goal in general. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate for affirmations. So what are the goals for your career right now? Your top three goals? Uh, I want to build my, my my fitness brand to you know to a global level. I definitely want to offer all type. I have a lot of ideas as far as services and products that I want to offer. But more importantly than that, I just want to make global impact. I, mean, I want to. Not just people who come from my background or look like me. I just want to... There's a lot of people who are trapped by by their own mental limitations. And I, like, I can identify with that. I remember feeling like there's only but so much I can achieve because of X, Y, and Z excuse. So my biggest thing is I want to show people the power that they have once they, once they free themselves of, of those mental limitations. So... That's 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 my number one thing is just impact, man. I I, I feel like I told you earlier in the interview. I feel like God has chosen chosen me to be a vessel that He uses to just show people what's possible when you make a decision to become unstoppable. And then, how do you feel about? Do you feel there is any connection between like hip hop and fitness? Or you feel like it should be more of a connection? Because that's why, I'm, like, even with my show, like, I'm interviewing all these artists, but I'm trying to get personal development. I feel like, well, fitness is 
personal development. So you actually one of my first fitness guests. So oh, dope. Um, yes, I, I think it, it more so can be um, the responsibility that I think a lot of you know the artists have with their influence. Um, so if they personally lived lived a healthy life, you know what I'm saying, or you know they worked out, they try you know they try their best to eat healthy. I think that's something that they should make um, apparent in their message or, or use their platform to kind of spread that because, I mean, it's, it's catching on, but, uh, you know, especially people from my neighborhood, they they follow rappers. They they want to mimic rappers. They That's their idol. I grew up with rappers as my idol. You know what I'm saying? So I know how powerful it, it can be to have a rapper you know, advocating a healthy lifestyle or healthy eating choices or, you know, being active. So I think that's the connection, I think, and more so the responsibility that I think hip-hop should take more seriously. Okay. And what advice would you give to anybody that kind of wants to, uh, I guess they want to follow what you do, inspire others through fitness? Um, practice what you preach. Um, the best way to inspire the best way to, to teach people is to lead by example. Um, and I'm really big on on integrity. And I think that's just the that's the core of it. You can't inspire, you can't, you know, build a brand with a message, you know, that speaks on something that you don't live. Um, I think being transparent is powerful. Um, I think Connecting on an emotional level with people, which which happens through transparency, um, is very powerful. And just being patient, connecting with one person at a time, and uh, making this about the people. You know what I'm saying? Like make make this about the people. Make this about the impact. Yes, it's a it's a it's a big it's a multi billion dollar industry, but like don't. I mean, and I, I'm not a person that's going to seriously say that money's not important. But when you make it about people and you make it about mission, you make it about purpose, then the money will come. You know what I'm saying? But as long as, like I said, you're honest, you, you practice what you preach, and you make this about the people, you will be successful at spreading that message. And then what would you say to somebody that's like, like you were saying earlier, like uh, got a lot of health issues, they want to make a health change, but they got like blocks in their head. What would you say? The affirmations for me, like just forming the vision, right? That was the biggest thing that I did in the beginning. Like I formed a vision for my body and I practically brainwashed myself to believe in that it was possible for me to, for me to, for me to acquire that vision or acqu acquire that body. And for them to just take their time, take your time, understand that this is a lifelong thing and, and you have to attack it from the root and the root is your habits. Like the, the habits you have right now is what built the, the life and the body that you have right now. So in order to get another body or to get another life, you have to form new habits. And that takes a long time. This is, a, this is, I'm only four years in, but I'm still learning things about myself. I'm still making adjustments. Um, but the, the consistency is such an important thing. Like your discipline is going to run out. Don't rely on discipline. Um, it's more so about focusing on doing it for the right reasons. Because once the roadblocks start popping up, if you're not doing it for the right reasons, if the reasons are physical, if it, the reasons are because you want to look good, it's not going to be enough. So just make sure you attach this journey, attach this mission to something bigger than just you or something bigger than what you just look like. And then you was talking about habits. So what are some ways like people kind of know, like with me, like growing up, you got a lot of nutrition habits, like bad eating habits. So what are some ways they can improve that and break that? It, it just takes time. I mean, it takes time. You, you start off small. Like I said, you, for instance, if, if you drink soda, Mm -hmm. um, which is a big a big issue for a lot of people. If you can, I think it's more realistic for me to say, okay, I'm gonna cut back on soda. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna drink 50, if I drink ten sodas a week, I'm gonna start off by drinking five sodas a week. You feel what I'm saying? And then progressively 
lower that as you go and just kind of take that approach with whatever it is your you know your vices because i'm i'm a big fan of balance like i don't expect people to cut stuff out like i still eat cake i still eat ice cream and pizza but just once in a while so just progressively make changes that align with whatever it is your goals are just, yeah, I was going to ask you that, what you think about, like, it seems like the trends now, a lot of people are going vegan as far as meat, so you still eat a lot of meat, or are you shying away from meat? Absolutely. I, I still eat meat, um, and I get the whole vegan thing. It, it, is it a healthier way to eat? Yes, I think it is, but it's not the only way to eat and be healthy. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm very healthy. I eat meat, I eat eggs, I eat dairy once in a while. So, this is my thing. Do what works for you. Don't be, do, make sure you do your, your research. Make sure you explore with different ways of eating and find out which, what works best for you. Don't eat away because you watch a DVD or you watch, you know what I'm saying, something on Netflix. Like, explore it. Find out if that's a way of eating that you can realistically do forever that works for your taste or your schedule or whatever it is that you got going on in your life you know what i'm saying like just try things out if it works for you do it if it don't change it all right and i want you to plug your store man because i saw your website you got the store with the products and uh the training sessions so i just want you to plug it yeah um all the information is on bricksfitness.com i do online coaching i have several packages for you know all uh you know financial situations <laughs> I have uh, meal plans. I do custom meal plans, and I also have a a few T-shirts up there. You know, I'm not really big on the merch yet, but I'm getting there, taking it, you know, taking it slow. But yeah, that's that's all on BricksFitness.com, B-R-I-X Fitness.com, and follow me on all the social, you know, all social networks at the same same name, Bricks Fitness, B-R-I-X Fitness, and uh, yeah, hit me up, man. I, I love talking to people, bro. So. Whoever's listening, if you've got any questions or whatever the case may be, just hit me up on any of those social networks and I'll definitely get back to you. All right, man. I want to say thanks for coming through Paul Tinker with me. No doubt, bro. What do you want to say to your, anything you want to say to your supporters, your fans? For everybody who, because, bro, I, I get a lot of comments and DMs and emails every single day and it's getting to the point now where I can't respond to everybody. Um, But just... You you guys, the people who support the brand, the people who tell me how much I've inspired them, just know that, that that's fuel for me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of work. I, what I do takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. Um, but I, I just want to thank every, every single person who supports and, and just know that the vision that you if you can, if you have the desire for it, if you can form the vision for whether it's for a specific body or specific life you have what it takes to make it happen so just believe in yourself and i know how corny it sounds but just believe in yourself because i you know i believe i believe in i don't think i have anything special in me i don't have any kind of special talents abilities or anything that was a that allowed me to do what i did i i truly believe anybody can do it so just believe that